We have reached 1998, and right knowledge is reaching people all over the world. The Supreme Grand Master, Naya Malachi Zadakiok L, is truly setting the record straight. Now listen to these facts, the voice of truth in these last days and times. The Nuwapian Nation of Moors brings you the man of the hour. Roll back. Uh, me and a friend was uh, conversating about it. After the question came up about the year 2000, what to expect as far as the alignment and things of that nature happened. I mean, uh, should we look for like just total destruction of certain places and rebuilding from that point on? And, uh, I think what you're trying to say. Is the world going to come to an end in the year 2000? He wants to know, he's not doubting, he's saying, if the world is going to come to an end. I mean, it's been two years, is it over, and are we wasting our time planning for a future? And, and that, I think that may come from, because he's probably knew his doctor. A lot of people think the alignment means the end of the world. And it doesn't. We're talking about climatic changes, cataclysmic changes. We're talking about the, the weather patterns changing. We're probably talking about the fear, mostly brother, of the axis shift. This is what their scientists are really afraid of. I just learned last night. The axis shift would mean all the warnings in both directions. We mean everything that's been, everything that they've built for the last hundred years to defend themselves against incoming floods is now coming on the other side. And now we've got to run to the other side called the National Guard, good job sandbag, when they have prepared themselves for winds and the water to come in from the east and it's coming in from the west inside. They just, like I said, they just discovered another fall in California that's been buried 18,000 years. Uh, six, six hours off of Jamaica went under. Uh, volcano the Rockies buried three other islands in the Caribbean. You can find so what we're looking at is the answer to your question, no, the world in itself will not be over in the year 2000. We got 2003, and then finality goes up to 2030. If all, we, have to keep, we have cycles of time to prepare ourselves spiritually and physically for this, this uh, calamity that the Book of Revelation is predicted, the Quran, the Muslims predicted, the back of the Vedas of Hindus, the writings of the uh, Hopi Indians, all the different wise societies that ever existed have all predicted this, these characteristic changes. And our ancient writers we refer to them as the seven thunders. The Bible calls them the seven plagues. You follow? And this, these are these are like a back of Egypt had the same problem. The ancient Egypt, the same situation. But the pharaohs did not. A change took place. When they speak about the end of the world, they speak, they're talking about the end of an era. The end of a certain man's rule. Beings that have now destroyed this planet. Mother Nature was referred to as Pegasus. Symbol, symbol of the G, which is the number six. Right? This beast like creature has destroyed the planet to such a degree where nature is taking her advantage. It's time to shift things. It's time to change. Error is time. When Christ spoke about the error, he spoke about a new age in the Bible. He said, look for a new age, not a new world. So when they think about the end of the world, they're talking about powers ruling because in Hebrew they use the word am, which means nation. And they also use the word goyim when they use nation. When they use the word goyim for nation, they're talking about the people goyim. And basically, in their doctrine, that means anybody who's ever like a beast in the study, when they study, when they use the word am, they're talking about nations in time, like a Babylonian nation, or a, a, a ruling class of people that rule for a period of time. We're at a point now in time where those that have been ruling are losing their power. Any time. A single man with a handgun can break into the White House and shoot two security guards and get as far as a White House employee's office goes. We have a breakdown of security. You follow? And, what, and, let, me, and let me add the racial, the racial just sort of bigotry in it is that there was a black guy and a white guy. The black guy was older than the white guy. And the white guy got buried first. And in the military, you can bury up to a whole platoon together. And have the guns to do everything. They can have both of their caskets draped in the American flag 
a very, the, the, the ceremony could have went on at the exact same time. That's racism in the saddest form. At that higher level in our government, where it's that obvious that they're still playing the black and white thing. When this man is buried the second day, like getting the back of the bus type of thing. No, it's not talking about, you will live past the year 2000. The millennium. These are do, the doomsday preachers, like Jerry Falwell and them, from the moral majority out of Lynchburg, Virginia, they're even backing out now. The one time Jerry Falwell and Jimmy Swagger and Billy Graham said the year 2000 is the end of the world. Not the end, and I can say, no, not the end of the world, the end of an era. The end of a certain rule. It's time for Caesar or Herod or Nebuchadnezzar to step down. It's time for the people to take over. France had in 1876. When, when the French took over and over, overthrew the aristocrats. Now, you and I don't even have the right to vote yet. You may think you do. But if you investigate it, you'll find out that it was an act that was never passed in Congress. So though we have been given a temporary permit to vote, it has never been sanctioned or felt proved that blacks or women are allowed to vote. It's not in law yet. It's still in act. You follow that? They still have written in their laws that you are two-thirds of a human being. You follow that? So as they fall from power, it has nothing whatsoever to do with you unless you align yourself with them like the book of Revelation said, unless you want to live in the image of the beast and follow in the steps of the beast, then those people will be in the lake of fire with the beast, the book says. So we're really not in the game. It's not our end. As I've already said before, it is only impossible for them to destroy us. This is, this is going to I like to this time. This is as, it's, it's as impossible for them to destroy us as it is to destroy roaches. <laughs> as fast as they wipe, as fast as we get the roaches out the house, they come back. It is an ongoing struggle to keep them out. You can keep them down for a while now, but they keep coming back up. Whether we come up as the Mayans or the Aztecs or the Olmecs or the Egyptians or the Babylonians or whatever we come up as, Native Americans, um, Arawaks, Tyler, wherever we come up, we come back. Whether it's in Puerto Rico or Cuba or in Mexico, we come back. His time is up. In 1991, all of Mexico looked up in the skies and they saw a large crash. The whole city of Mexico. Hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of videotapes of crafts that the government of America ignored talking, and pushed out Roswell, which is a controversial UFO involvement, rather than to address literal crafts in the sky. But the Mexicans said, this is our prophecy that our ancient ones are coming back. This is the end of an era. Nostradamus said, this is the end of an era. The Hopi said, this is the end of an era. And the Neturu, or the Anutu, which is our descendants and ancestors, descending down and ancestors from us, say, this is the end of an era. The Father, all we have to do is stay out of the way. They will fight each other. And I was talking about this the other day. And you think that's a coincidence? That the man who ran into the White House happens to be living in Montana? That the Jewish brother happens to live in Montana in the same type of hut? Made up the same wood, look like it's the same age wood? You think that's a coincidence? The gentleman spoke to the German walked in the back of that car in Washington, D.C. a couple months ago with that disease. Do you think E. coli is an accident? Do you think the virus out there is an accident? No, they're chasing. They're chasing bugs. They, if you keep up with the media, you find out that less than six months ago, they were having a problem in Disney World when it was about to cancel Disney World because of poison mosquitoes. All over Florida, they knew about it. Media control kept us from getting a lot of information. I go back and forth to Florida and bring it back. So you know what they did? If they can't use the pesticide, what must they do? 
they must burn fire. They didn't anticipate Gaia, the big G, from the major stepping in and holding back the rain until the fire got out of hand. But bugs grew to another point. So now that the fire is far enough to control, they have them somewhere else. They're chasing insects towards Georgia. They admitted that mosquitoes now can transport viruses. After years of telling you that once a mosquito bites you, he immediately dies. And I would constantly tell brothers, that's not true. You can get AIDS from the mosquito. And people say, that man is crazy. Don't believe it. I, and my simple statement was, have you ever seen a mosquito in front of you on the floor after you got bit? What they do, they do incendiate, what they do disintegrate. They go somewhere after they bite you. Do you think they just bite you and go off the corner and die? You find the mosquitoes in front of you. Or they die in the skin. No, they leave and they bite other people. And they take blood from one person to another. They are the original vampires. They follow and they know what they're doing. They know the plagues of the Bible that we have right now. And they're driving those insects up there. Because they're moving north. And they're moving north because they cannot take the sun. You hear me? They can't. We're having a hard time taking the sun. So you know they're having a hard time taking their sun. And we're sun people. We come from the Caribbean. We come from the Caribbean, Africa. So we're having hell with the sun. They ain't, they ain't no Nubians or Dwakians or Negroes there. They're not having no problem with the sun. So those people who have not fixed their melody, we do it. Those ethnoseparatists that concentrate on separation, which is when it's an era of integration, those people that can't stand their blood is not strong enough. There's not enough melody in their body. And cancer is attacking them. And instead of going on and marrying some Nubian and mixing his blood, or mixing it with a Latino or a Latino, like a smart rich dude, no, you're going to be so stubborn and that you'll die. So they're moving up north. And here's where it comes back to the other fair. Because as they move north, and we hit that 25,000 to 26,000, the reason why I mentioned two dates is because you have the equinox and the procession. The equinox is the 24,000 years or 25,000 years very specifically that your planet moves, moves all the way around, your whole solar system moves around the sun. But then, because your planet has been shifted off its axis, why there's some left hand and some right hand people here, because it's been pushed to a 23 degree axis, now you have to worry about that axis needle moving, and that's called secession, and that happens every 26,000 years. Well, they have been logging and clocking this until today. Now we're at that point of the procession. And the fear is that the needle will shift. That means that the sun gets closer to the ice caps. That means that the ice begins to melt. That means raising of water in Alabama. More floods for us. That means all up in the Catskill Mountains, Canada, all up in that way, they're going to be buried underwater. If they can't figure out a way to keep the planet from shifting, they literally want to go against the natural course of nature. They succeed in doing it so many times that they are actually thinking they're going to. They succeed in cloning people and giving people plastic hearts and big eyeballs. The bottom, and now they want to actually keep the planet from tilting back to its proper position because it must go past a direct and then over. When it's at its direct point, we become God. And then it starts to lean. Because when we get back, our brain capacities will go back to natural. We're only using a portion of our brain because we're all leaning to one side. You don't believe? Catch any group of Nubians standing and watch them lean to one side. They never stand on both feet. They never stand on two feet. Whatever we get comfortable, we do this. <laughs> and that's because we are just laughing. I'm never going to come up. I ain't joking. I'm saying this is frightening to me. I'm going to go We are trying to realign our brain so we can be in sync with the flows of intellect that comes from us from the heavenly host. Called angels, I saw them mention them by others. Whatever the name is, whatever the culture makes you feel happy. 
talking about, we are at that time of day when you're sitting there and it just starts raining out of nowhere. You're on your way to where you look up and because you're old enough to remember, you can space the time it takes to get from one place to the next. So you're walking down the street, you look up and say, I got to have a spot right there. I think I'm going to rain. So I got to take off on right now to get down the clock over there. Get halfway there and go down there. There's no way because I don't see the clouds no more. Like I said last night, you see, you see light when you don't hear no sound. They have a thing called a hop project. The hop project's in Canada and Alaska. And they're sending out microwaves. This is not, this ain't no fat, go to your computer and say hop project. And look it up and find out if it's true so they can show you pictures of it. They're actually sending out brain deadening waves because when they started hearing these young boys rap, and they saw how their brain was able to put together rhythm and rhyme, they knew something was going on. You're looking at it as sometimes, me and you and old folks saying, this is dead or hip hop junk. But the, but the wizards of the society said, how do they do that? And I'll, I'll, I'll take a brother standing there, 40 years old, right now, stand on the go ahead and rap and make him a rhyme right on the spot. And he'll have help, like I would. I can take one of these teenagers, stand up, and he can just rap, and she just rap along, rhyme, make sense. They ain't got no rhythm. They ain't got no soul. But they got some type of brain power that is not normal. It's not, you see, you kids, it's normal to y'all, because y'all do it every day. For us old folks, when we hear y'all rap, we say, I've seen kids walk in the studio and just say, I said, well, where's your paper? I don't need no paper. You don't need a paper? You don't remember? Say, hell, you know what he's thinking? The way these kids are memorizing that. They start memorizing science and biology and sociology and chemistry and everything. That is the end of his power. Because he bought in the computer because, thank you, he bought in the computer because he could not calculate any longer. Because his brain waves were dying. He started seeking out mystics for guidance and saturated the television with psychics for guidance because his brain waves are dying. He is regressing and we are progressing. He's going back towards a very animal-like state. And I repeat, you have nothing to worry about. They are afraid of the new mind, the new time zone we're moving in. They are losing power, and their own people are turning on them. You don't have to worry. It's not, it's never been perpetrated at us. The end of the world has nothing to do with us. We will always be. We will we have eternal life. As long as we are breathing, we will always exist. And when babies stop being born, that's when you start breathing. As long as you see a baby born, there's hope. It's whether or not you take that baby and you deliver that baby into the hands of God or you deliver that baby into the hands of the devil. When you send that baby into that world, you're delivering your baby into the hands of the devil to become a devil and to help the devil in his mission. He's been trying to cut us off, trying to wipe us out. AIDS was designed to wipe you out. They tailor make drugs now. Tailor make poison. We have a whole report, I put it on the internet, in South Africa. Scientists are now confessing that they were hired to go into the laboratory to create certain types of diseases and viruses that only work on you. And they're putting it in certain foods. Foods you like, they say. And they list the foods. And they don't show, no more the foods we like. That means they expect us. You understand? They actually study us to know what we like and dislike. These are the times that if you are Christian, your Bible is talking about. These are the times that if you are Muslim, your Quran is talking about. These are the times that if you are a Hindu or a Buddhist, it's a fact that being or Upanishad was talking about. That's the day and time you and I are in now. Wars and rumors of wars. 
pestilence, diseases. We're trying to turn our hearts and our fathers toward their sons. And they're trying to turn their children to kill their mothers and fathers. They're teaching them to do it. You want to stop the killing? Get rid of uh, Sylvester Stallone. Get rid of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Spox is this acting Schwarzenegger. And there wasn't so many ladies, I'll tell you what Schwarzenegger means in German. Think, you'll figure it out. Get rid of these people who are the messengers of destruction, the messengers of violence, the messengers of war. And in every movie, cars are blown up, buildings are falling, people are shooting each other. Now it's explicit. Bullets penetrating. And the kids get their adrenaline built on that. And then the atmosphere creates it where it's necessary for me to have a gun in my house in order for me to protect my family, and I might end up, my son might shoot my daughter. If I throw a gun out, now I gotta worry about you. If I keep a gun there, I gotta worry about what you taught my kid to do with the gun. Because it ain't the gun that kills the person who puts it in his hand, but more so the society that teaches the man what to use a gun for. Stop cowboy movies, they ain't cool. With two people having a showdown in the street, that's what drive-by shootings is. Two days having a showdown in the street. Stop the cowboy movies. Stop the gangster movies. If you care about the minds of people, put forth some constructive media. Not this stuff. When the last time you saw a movie, a comedy, a love movie, did they have something to do with somebody blowing up something? Somebody killing somebody. Somebody choking somebody. Somebody raping somebody. When's the last time you saw a wholesome good movie? Only time you see a Jesus movie in old Christmas. For a week of Christmas, they said they're putting on religious movies. That's all. Then where they put on black movies. That's it. That's real sad. You hear me, y'all? And we're in a day and time where we've got to learn to do for ourselves. But they're poisoning our foods. We got to grow our own food again. We killed ourselves. Why do all of our grandfathers are all sick? Why do all have high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, kidney problems, prostate problems, breast cancer? Why do we have all this stuff? Because of what they fed us. Oh, well, they didn't feed it to you, you went and brought it. It's called multiple choice of starve to death. When you walk into a supermarket, it's about what's on the shelf or nothing else. And if everything there is like artificial flavor and tinted with this and tinted with that, and these things get inside and poison you, and they've now proven most of the things that we were eating back in the 40s is poison that killed people. They weren't prepared. The problem? Now our grandfather in the, in the hospital is dying. Miserable suffering deaths. There ain't nothing we can do. But there's something we can do about the day to tomorrow, and if we don't do something about that, then we're fools. We go back to grandma's ideas of planting. Get out there and put some dirt under your nails and plant your potatoes yourself. Put a good hard day work in for yourself and stop being a slave to the master. <laughs> stop going out there and serving the devil in his time who's working principalities in high places. They're way out there. We got all the problems. That's the, this is America, you know. Why isn't this, why isn't this dollar on television? You know what this dollar said? One hundred percent of the American people just said, because one hundred percent of any room is a hundred percent. So they take a poll, they take a poll of selected people who are already programmed. How many of us really care about AIDS? Hey, Raise your hand. How many of us would prefer them to put billions of dollars into AIDS than to send their rockets to Mars right now? This is a matter of opinion. But they say that they take polls and we agree for them to spend billions of dollars shooting rockets in air. They say that, but right now when you say in any poll of it, everybody here is not part of our organization or family, are you? Some people are just visiting us. But everybody's hand went up on stuff that makes sense. How we have problems. Ain't nobody doing nothing about it. And we're losing children. They're not coming to the churches. They're not coming to the mosques. 
They ain't coming to the synagogue. They ain't going nowhere near God. And that's when we are at our best. You know why? Because we are by nature spiritual people. Whether it is sin, because I'm telling you, you can go to a Prince concert and get the Holy Ghost. If you like Prince enough, it ain't got to be hard. It's got to be hard. Not because you get spiritual. You can get out there and get some bungalows out there and pull out, and we can get the plane and somebody will go out there. And they'll do the same thing in the Pentecostal church. They'll get the ghost. Why? Because we are falling over with spirit. Falling over with soul and expression. Suppressed. Like a time bomb which results in the children going crazy. Because we don't have expression. I can't act the way I want to act. Can't do the things I want to do. We we hang out the boots. I'm going for the seven. They all call us. We stand around and say, Hell, we ain't got no money. We take an old meal box and make a drum out of it. Disturbing the feet. Make a horn on the toilet bowl, the toilet paper man. Where's all that come from? That's that latent power inside of us. That's suppressed because we're walking behind a robot. Who wants it suppressed? Because as the godly qualities come out of you, creativity comes out of you. You have that ability to adapt and to change. We can make it. When everybody else in the 1940s, when Wall Street collapsed, they jumped out the window. They landed on us. We was already out there. I said, we're going to go. We got no way to go. You don't even know some of y'all too young to know that some of your grandmothers and grandfathers went back to the bank and they were told there's no money. When all their savings was in the bank. Am I lying? We're told we're sorry. The banks were locked. And people were standing inside saying, sorry. And I'm going to ask you young folks a question. If you went to the bank and had all your life savings in the bank, and when you got there that morning, they said, sorry, the Wall Street in New York collapsed, and you down here in Georgia, your money ain't here, what would you do? <laughs> talk to me, young people, not old folks like me, young folks, talk to me, what would you do? <laughs> Say what? You know what they're saying? Throw them all over. Throw them all over. You know what we did? We did absolutely nothing. Because we were docile. Now, we're not talking about being docile. We're 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 and I say this a million times, but today, when they walk up to a car and ask for a driver's license, police is shaking, knees and stuff is rattling. I've seen things on TV that I never thought I'd see in my life. I saw a police stand out there, give us my ticket, somebody come run that nigga over. And where is that over? On television. I saw, can I do this? I think about it, I did it. I saw, I saw a woman, a woman told me, pull his brother out of the car, in front of his daughter, and the brother's backing up, and the woman said, give me the key, he said, let me talk to you, give me the key, just get over, she said, let me talk to you, he said, bam, broke her face, I don't mean, I don't mean, oh, what do you say, metaphorically, metaphorically broke her face, he broke her face, broke all the bones in her face, received a pound on her body, I've seen them telling me they pull a cop over and they know he was a cop. But the white cop, the brother said, I'm a cop. I'm a cop. Get off me. I'm a cop. Don't in the streets. Those things didn't happen in my day. You were too scared. When we saw the police, how do we pronounce it? <laughs> we never heard of the police. When we saw the police, we started to shake wherever it was. And we walked in the church, we got scared. And we knew somebody was going to get beat up and hurt. But the Irish hated us. You hear me? Not nowadays. The Almighty has bred heavenly hosts, warring angels, angry 
people. I've been hanging with your man. And the worst part about it is little Caucasian kids have come over and joined in on the bed. And they hip hop and rapping too. It beat the hell out of racism. It got down to right and wrong. And these kids feel, if you wrong me, I'm retaliating. Hell, we didn't have that in us back then. We were scared. You know we were scared. All you old men over here, you know we were scared. I'm 53 years old. And I was scared. But now I'm young boys, you need courage. Just the way they set it up. Just to watch the phone, you're scared. I'm coming for a car. That's it, it's pretty obvious. We followed you for two miles. But he said, no, don't stop. When they told us to stop, we stopped and had accidents. Don't hit these girls. They said, stop, we get this. Y'all drive an extra four blocks and then pull your little shoulder over and then bounce it for a little while first. And then stop. Yeah. That's what y'all do. Right? And he got to say, I'm coming for your car. Put your hands on the ground. Put them behind you, fellas. Get out of the place. <laughs> what can we do here? And I don't know what to do with y'all. We can see what they're doing. They say, get on the floor. The person is going to sit on the floor. They shake the seat of the person. Shake it. They scared. They scared of y'all. Because y'all were born warriors. And Bruce Lee didn't help. Teaching people how to kick people. You ain't telling your son to kick your dog and keep out. All in the matter of, of Bruce Lee. Let me get a new one now. Is it Bruce Lee? So they go on the way. You hear me, y'all? That's the day and time of Lord, I hate to say it's a beautiful day in time, but it's a beautiful day in time. It's been a long time coming, but a change is going to come. <laughs> it's been a long, we've been waiting a long time to see this thing change. Not that I want to hurt nobody. All I want is what I am doing. I don't want nothing for free. I don't want your welfare. I don't want nothing you can take away when I'm doing good. I want to earn it. I'm entitled to a piece of the rock that I chipped off. And if you're not going to give it to me, I have to figure out another way to get mine. Because I can't depend on you no more. I can't trust your image going into my son's and going into hearts anymore. Because it taught them to hate me. It played fair. You hated me for the love I gave you. Our grandmothers washed their clothes, raised their children, breastfed them, and they still hate us. Come right out and crucify your great grandfather, from your grandmother, who's taking care of her kids. That's what they did. You know that y'all might not know who's gonna lose those man. Is Nat King Cole the first black man to ever be on television? With his own show, that is. Was it wasn't going to be hot, 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 hot. It wasn't shining and kissing. The very one, you know, we had Willie. We had um, Rock and Rebel, man! Boss! <laughs> we had William with Eyes. We had um, Amos and Andy, oh man, see? There it is. Amos and Andy was white. People don't know that. Do you know Amos and Andy was not black? They put up some figures, but the men did go and do some research to find out. Who am I? Bill Cosby is one of the villains. But that's all that sample of man. What was that woman's name? He's yes, lady. High voice. Beulah. Beulah. But Obama's Y'all don't know about these things, do you? You know they killed that Nat King Cole? He do it, listen to him, they killed him. His life story, he died of a broken heart. He didn't want to live for the services that he rendered, the way they treated him. Red Fox kept white, black, Chinese, Indian, and Martians laughing. <laughs> More than 50 years, Red Fox died poor. Sammy Davis Jr. tap dance, smile, bow table, and entertained everybody without concern of race. Stripped him of everything. You understand? But when Frank Sinatra started losing his mind because of Alzheimer's disease, 
He couldn't no longer do concerts because he couldn't remember his words. They started hooking him up. Big old screen on the stage. I saw it trying to get off. Big old screen with the word this big. So he would be in. All out of key. And they were going anyway. They were just clapping away. That kind of stuff hurts. All the only one tell us about Billy Holiday is he died as a drug addict. Now the drug addict. What about all the movie stars bowing their dogs? Let's talk about that some more. You hear me? If you don't see what day and time we're in, you're in trouble. And I'm not saying we got to hate nobody, because if we start hating people, we're going to be as bad as them. Don't run up on me with that black power shot. I ain't got no time for it. I love how I'm a wonderful man. He needs to stop wasting that intelligence on that bull crap and put that brain on something constructive for everybody in this damn country. So think about black and white and one of You don't know that it's only 10% of the population of white people have the problem. The other 90% of the white people have the problems on welfare too and getting dogs just like this. But every time you see any white man on the field, all that white man wants to go like you. You're wrong. You're dead wrong. The first thing they thought all about in that whole black city thing is blowing their blue-eyed people with the devil. And they did everything to us. Then when you investigate history, you find out blowing their blue-eyed people never came in contact with you. You were dealing with the Portuguese, the so-called slave states. John Hawkins. They did not come on there. Those that did not come on there, let's go down to prison. He was Italian. And he was a sister there, but he was not that kind of Roman. He did not come from the fire in his basketball. But he did not come from the AI, he did not come from the AI. 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 Now, we are 
Lutherans. And those people over there that are permanent people up under this doctor, y'all keep a charismatic speaker. That bothers the hell out of me, y'all. They don't even like to say, yo, son. No, son. They don't like when I just say, nam, jay, ya, danka, uki. They don't like when I just speak 19 languages and translate their bullshit. They don't like that. Let me tell you what it says in the language that it came down from heaven in, not in the language that King James of Flame and Fight, who wanted to kill his wife, wrote it in. Now watch that, brother. Don't do that with the Bible. The Bible is in the Old, it's in the New Testament, the book of Revelation that's bitterness. It's not even in the Old Testament. So what was it, what was the Old Testament called? Alright, so why is the Bible on the Old Testament? But they start off like They don't like this. They don't like these days and times. They don't like the wake up call. So therefore, I have to be a charismatic. We don't know what his motives are. We see parents and faces with an S on it. They all talk sorts of Egyptian gods and statues. You can go out of that road and count those statues and look back at every history book and see the name of each one. Correct? And that is a cult worship. I can go to the Catholic Church. I can look up and see St. Paul, St. Business, St. Dickens, St. St. Joe, Jude, St. St. Francis, did it right? He's real with this. I know all that he was about. But St. Francis broke off from the Catholic Church and formed his own body and fought against the Catholic Church for a hundred years. But St. Francis is easy. And he formed the monks that opposed the Catholic Church. And he was considered a cult. And now they're ready for Mother Teresa. Nice old lady.
You know, just say blasphemer. Get out there, Cherokee devil. That's what they would say. They won't realize that it's a new mind. There's a new mentality coming in. And people are going to ask you. If you tell me something, I'm going to ask you about it. I'm going to ask you, do you know what you're talking about? You ain't just picking me up and walking me down the road no more, sir. No, sir. I want to know, do you know what you're talking about? That's why you don't want me in the church. The Reverend Huss, the Blessing, the Indians, and everybody talking to me. I ain't never been invited to talk to nobody. My feelings are hurt. <laughs> nobody likes me. Why do I don't want to talk to me? Why do I don't want to talk to me? What's wrong with me? You know that kind of a person? Now, I'm talking to y'all, don't get a little bit of how come the government don't want to talk to me? And why would he tell me how they don't want to talk to me? That's when they talk, that's when they hold the paper, hug each other, I feel left out. <laughs> I ain't been invited. I said, if I'm ready to do anything, I love you. You can love me. Yes, I know. Check it off. Drop it off. Nobody likes me. No, man. Nobody wants to deal with me. Because I'm the question man. If you say something, I'm going to ask you how you know. And he said, I want to be told out of the language, I'm from all the way to My next question is, oh, so you speak fluent Arabic? No, then why don't you just hear the English? What's the, what's the big charade for? And I won't be lying. What's the Bellboy office for? I don't see anything that's not about the Bellboy office at FOI. What's that? That's the sign? Look at the Turkish flag. That's why they want to run. Y'all know the Yahweh. You're the son of God? And you're in jail? And they got beat up in jail? And they can't speak Hebrew, God's language? Just come on. And I am being people that are going to be able to do the same thing now. But I told y'all from day one, don't believe anything I say. 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 Check me out. And I've been insulted when you don't investigate. I hate you walk there, I just believe everything you say. That's, not, that's how you actually got to check me before. <laughs> I'm telling people, check me out. Investigate what I say. And people have been doing it for years, come back to the world pop. Truth. So truth is truth. They say truth is truth. And let's use that as our banner and go forth against the world. Combine that with the minds of the new incarnate angelic beings who are the warriors from heaven and let's get the damn job done. Before, before this man, before it was planet, it ain't no way for none of us to live any more on it. He's destroyed it for me and you. When you mess up the air, he ain't messing up just the neighborhoods, you know. When you mess up the minds of the children, you mess up the future. You understand? If they didn't like Snoop Dogg, you wouldn't have platinum records. You hear know I me? Mean? Anybody know anybody in the music business know how much they got to go through to get a hit record? They got to kick more butt. They scrutinize them, examine them, remix their material, change it. They make them a big star. They want him out there. They want his image out there. They want a young boy calling themselves gangsters. They want them shooting each other off. Population control. We breathe. We screw. Too much, he said. We ain't got nothing else to do. We ain't got nothing else to do. So we ain't going to do our favorite sport. It's our favorite pastime. We put down the Bible there, though. God comes off the many things we're allowed to do. We ate, right? Yeah. We pray, right? Yeah. We live and look at the TV here, yeah, so something we forgot to do. <laughs> Baby time. And we are feathers because we are nature. So we breathe. Jump in the sack. She's a baby. Right along. Right. All we got to do is listen. Yeah, no babies everywhere here. Yeah. Every direction I look, I look at the child. Man, they're stalks don't bring them, you know. <laughs> And they know you should be that fast. 
And everybody breathing as fast as we breathe, and they're not being bred to become slaves and servants, is a problem. So we must come up with some kind of way to control the population. Whether it be gang busting kids sniping each other, or drugs, or AIDS, or whatever, we must control the population. They don't give a darn about this Bible. Whether they're in church, they don't care nothing about this Bible. You believe they do, you are full. But they went through this Bible cover to cover. You understand? If you go look, if any of you male wise enough or old enough to walk through the side of God and get high enough to find out what they really think in the Bible, you find it funny. It'll be a joke to you. Find out what they really know. Let me show you who God is in this Bible. I wasn't going to give it back to you, sister. I'm going to give it to you in a minute. There's a man in this Bible called Nimrod. That man, Nimrod, is God in this Bible. Now, how do you figure that, Doc? Let me say some weird stuff, Doc. <laughs> you got your Bible with you? Huh? That's what I'm talking about. Turn to Genesis. Genealogy of Isis. Genesis. You hear it? The Hebrew word is Barashim. The English word means the genealogy of Isis, the beginning of the Egyptian dynasties. That's why they call it the beginning. Go to the 10th chapter. You hear it? Look at the first verse. Can you see that? Anybody else got a Bible? You don't have a Bible? <laughs> Hey, well, one person in the Bible was like, oh, y'all yeah, heathen? <laughs> and I tell you, that's how you go into the new day and time. One time, there's no way to be ready, he has a Bible. Now there's no way to go be taken. Did y'all found out something? Well, <laughs> uh. Now, these are the generations of the sons of North. Let me ask something. First of all, North in the Bible is Noah. And it means to light down upon. They say rest. Because they can play a phonetic game in English for you. And to rest also means to light down upon. And you can easily rest, rest and rest like resting to slumber to sleep. With rest like rest this jaw down, which is an improper English. But being rest speaking in American English, they can put King's English in here and this guy rhetoric. And as you can see the heat. And they don't see the Hebrew, so they're misguided. And we're going to point it out because, if you see the name Noah in your Bible, and it says rest, and it means to rest down, and it's making reference to the ark resting on Mount Ararat, which they use when they say an ark resting on Mount, Mount Ararat, in the Hebrew, again, they have the name Noah. So, the question would be, how could a man be named Noah when he was a baby? and didn't find out he was going to build an ark until he was a grown man. And he didn't even know. So you can't tell the prophesied because in the Bible it says God said, No. And no like what? I want you to build me an ark. And no like, uh-huh. What's an ark? <laughs> he wanted him to build a boat in the middle of the desert. I ain't talking about testing faith. But the point is, how did Noah's mother and father know to name him Noah? Where Arthur rests on Mount Ararat, what he was a baby. It tells you that Noah had another name. He had another name. His name was Fitna Fishman. And he could look it up. Please don't trust me. I don't want you to trust anybody, check everybody. So, look it up, and you'll find something called the Gilgamesh Epics. And the Gilgamesh Epics speaks about a world flood, and a man who built an ark and survived in this world flood with his family, and the man's name was First in the We go to any library and look it up. Look up Gilgamesh Epics and find that that story existed 3,000 years before Noah was born. Okay, 
Babylonian tablets recorded in a strip of cuneiform. Passed into Phoenician, Akkadian, Chaldean. It was written in almost 30 different dialects before it reached Hebrew. And recorded and can be found today on home tablets before I go to Berlin. How does that make you feel? That you believe in Noah's story in the Bible from Sunday school to find out that the story was predated the Bible by 3,000 years. Has anybody know what that number? Anybody know what that number? And the whole story is there, right? About the Lord telling him to take his family to heart and everything. And I think the Lord is uh, so um, plagiarism. You can't go write something out of somebody else's book without their permission. And whether this is Bible didn't say if I copied this from the they stole the story and made it divine. And you believed it. Millions of Muslims worldwide, Christians and Jews are believing the North Star. And they won't even investigate. But the pathway that there is a caring, loving, concerned, omnipotent power is that it leaves floors like that. That's why it says, he who got air let him fit. The Father, when he's speaking unto the angels, and you become an angel, and you no longer listen to the words of men, and you start questioning everything. No preacher, no teacher, no pastor, no rabbi, no imam should be not questioned. Your father, when you start to question them, you watch them and look at squirrels like snakes. Shut you up in the church. Tell you, I'll meet you in a private chamber. Talk to me in private. And now I want to talk to you in front of everybody. I want everybody to witness this. But it said in St. John chapter 1, John was said, as a witness, to bear witness. So I want everybody to bear witness that you don't know what you're talking about so you get down off that pulpit. But we don't have the time to be bold around you in your crack while the world is ending. You worry about Jesus coming to stop it. That woman had a baby snatched out of her arms. It's too late for Jesus for her. How many people here have people today die? Because of drugs, relatives or friends, or gunshots. Too late for Jesus to you. See, they can only appeal to people who have not met the hands of sin. You know what I'm saying? They can work on you and have it not on your door. That the black cattle have not kneeled down in front of your door yet. And the angel of Israel out of death did not take somebody out of your house. Uh, it's easy to appeal to you. But it's too late for me to worry about your Jesus when my mother or my father or my sister or my brother got smashed up in a car on our 20. Or my brother or son or sister in a party of some fool playing cowboy shoots up the body and kills them. So they wait for you to put the Jesus crap on me. Oh man, they got a whole job on living with this thing. You gotta look at these things in another way. You understand? When their churches were burning down, I was saying, where is Jesus? Every day a new church. Where is Jesus? When is he coming? How long must we wait? We're now in the 2000th year. We're all awake for 2,000 years since the man left. How long must I wait? How long must I be kicked in the butt? Abused, raped. My man was taken away from me, treated like a chump. You know what I mean. You can pull you out your car and die out here in front of your wife and your kids and just stay out there and just do a check. Go ahead, buddy. I try to rip his head off there and murder. How long? Too long, y'all. Too long. That's why I'm here. Well, it's too long. I'm not coming to win. 
I ain't trying to win no clear call. Popularity contest. I'm not the man for that. When they send me, I'm supposed to be hated. I'm supposed to be persecuted. I'm supposed to be the Bible. All types of evil things are supposed to be said against me. They're supposed to be able to their power to keep me from getting to you. To resurrect you off the dead. All I do is step forth the hand. Say, hold on tight. You're laying in a grave, an unlit grave. Let me pull you up. He said, yeah, brother, pull me into the light. No. Pull you into the darkness. The light blinds. Ain't no man ever got blinded by darkness. That's what verse teaches. And I walked the path where I saw the light. And seeing the light, I knew they weren't right. They didn't know what they were saying on that cold Thursday night. <laughs> and I knew it. Took me a while to grasp the reality that God was in the darkness when he said that there be light. That he was in the darkness, and when the light came on, the chaos began, and all hell broke out. They told me hell is on fire, and fire produces light. Watch the niggas try to take you to the light. Them niggas ain't right. I tell y'all, you better put up a fight. 